Housekeeping my items before uh, we talk about the game. I, I talked to the team today about Veterans Day and the fact that uh, this building is named after Lawrence Joel. I looked, you know, he um, got the Medal of Honor or earned it in November of 1965. I was born in March of 65, so I was talking to him about that, you know, and uh, being the first medic in, in the history of the world or United States history to get a the Medal of Honor, and then, you know, um, and be from Winston-Salem. So I wanted them to understand not only the impact of what Veterans Day is, but also the impact of the building that they're playing in and who it's named after. And so uh, I thought that was – I thought they represented themselves and, and Lawrence Joel tonight in a, in a, in a really good way. Um, Robert McCray uh, has made the decision to redshirt. Um, it's something that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, between me and him and his parents, and um, I f fully support that. And, you know, we're going to help him, uh, you know, get better and, and, and improve as a player, and he's going to help us. And he's a great teammate, a super young man. And so that's why uh, he wasn't dressed tonight. Uh, Jao Ituka, 10 days ago, had what they call a PRP. I stay in my own lane. I'm not a doctor. Um, I know it's a shot in your knee for tendonitis in his patella. Tomorrow will be the first day he can exercise. And so what I've been told is not to expect him back on the court until after we get back from Jamaica. But hopefully back when we get back from Jamaica, maybe we can get him, you know, on the court. We'd, we'd like to have him out there. Um, I thought first half was about as good as we could play defensively. We were really locked in, but I wasn't surprised because that's the way we practiced. That's the way we were at. We did, uh, worked out today. I thought we were – Flawless in pick and roll coverage, caused them a lot of problems. Um, they kind of went away from it actually and went more middle pick and roll in the second half. Um, but it's kind of a tale of two halves. You know, we got sloppy, we got up big, you know, and then just got careless. And when Ty checked out the game with 5.18 to go, we were up 20. But I only had one timeout left. <laughs> and so the media didn't get there till two, and I almost I was about to use it just to get him back in the game, and the game turned a little bit there. We got some young guys that probably didn't make very good decisions, but I thought we did a really good job for the most part. The rebound the ball, finishing possessions, like I said, pick and roll D. They got to spread out and transition late in the game. That's the that was the one way they were going to get back in it was drive it, and you got to give them credit. They didn't go away. You know they got some good players and. You know, they'll, they'll continue to get better. But I thought it was a really good win for our team, especially for a second game of the year. You know, we've played two really good opponents for us, and uh, I think both different. And uh, it'll help pay off uh, down the road. Steve, I thought early in the game they really did a nice job of getting in the passing lanes and kind did. of set the, set the tone defensively. Right. A lot different maybe than the other night. Yeah, it's a different team, you know, different style of play. And that's the great thing about non-conference. You just see different type – of teams like like Georgia got out and pressured us in the half court. We could drive it and get there, but we had to play off two shot fake because they weren't going to take charges. Where Fairfield took charges, they did, they were going to block shots, so we had to make extra passes, you know, for threes. But part of that uh, stealing the pass was us catting and mousing in the pick and roll. They were we iced down the ball screens. They tried to short roll, hit the elbow, and we were kind of a couple times we got in there stripped and ripped it. A couple of times we kind of faked that and we got back out into the uh, passing lane. And so um, I thought those guys, we talk about this a lot, John, is about getting the game plan into the game. And uh, they did as good a job of that in, for a young, a young team like they are in the second game of the year that, you know, I've had in a while. I mean, I, I thought they, they did a good job executing the defensive game plan. Steve, it seemed like early in the game, Georgia made a concentrated effort to feed the post. They, they did. Right at Dave, Dave They did. Man. And they kind of ate him up for the first three Couple. possessions. And then he came out, and then from then on, he seemed like he played pretty good for you. I thought Davian played great. I mean, I don't know what he had. He had 11 and four. Um, yeah, they, and I told him that. He, everybody watches film, right? So they watch Fairfield. What are you going to do? I'm going to throw it in there. Um, 
early on, we, they didn't do a good job of getting ahead of the play. One of the big things about being a post player is you got to stay ahead of the play and, and stay in position. Now, the other thing that we did, and we haven't showed it, we monstered the post some a little bit where we doubled down with the guards. Now, maybe that got them to get away from it, I don't know. You know, um, but in the first half, we were mixing it up. Sometimes we were coming, sometimes we weren't. We were changing it up every time out. We were monstering the four, we were monstering the five. Sometimes we weren't monstering. And I think it kept them off balance. And so, but I thought him and Zach did a good job of, from, yeah, the first few possessions of getting ahead of the play and getting that ball up out of there. Okay. Two quick ones. First off, going back to Rob McRae, nowadays in college basketball with the portal and all this, like, what exactly do those conversations look like between coach and player yeah. making tough decisions? Like, well, I've always, direction? you know, Josh, I've always feel like those are between me and the player. Sure. Yeah, and so I don't really – I'm not going to divulge what was said, but it's not um, – I will say this, it's never something that I, I decide, you know, at least for me. Like, when it comes to redshirting, I always feel like the player has to make the decision, right? And he's got to feel good about it. And so, um, you know, him and I had a couple, three conversations. He talked to Coach Mack, he talked to the parents, and it just came down to, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you as a player. And in, in his mind, that's what's best for him. I support it. I've had so many guys redshirt that have played so well after they've redshirted. It's a little disappointing to me, the portal, because I don't think guys use it enough. And you, sometimes you're just not ready. And sometimes you're just behind some good players. You got two senior guards that are really good. Uh, they just showed it tonight, old peanut butter and jelly there. And so, um, you know, it's going to be hard. You know, when you got those, uh, and you got Cam, and you got. Uh, Luke's played well, and, and, and Damari's coming off the bench, and you got Bobby can play three, play four, and Jao hasn't played yet. You know, there's there's a kind of a log jam in there. So, I, I mean, I thought he I thought it was a really good decision. I know you were a big World War II guy, history guy. You you opened up by talking about Lawrence Joel. You talked to anybody about Lawrence Joel? Have you done who? How did you learn about him? Oh, I mean, I just study. And then some people, I think, I don't know, Bless wrote the article. Somebody's written a couple articles about him when I got here. But, um, you know, I'm sure somebody here at Wake has kind of me mentioned it to me when I got the job. But I tend, you know, I'm one of those people I like to go read and figure it out. And and so I went back today, and I already knew. But I wanted to know. I, I didn't realize it happened. I didn't realize that he was fighting in Vietnam when I, right when I was born. You know, it was, it, and I remember that time a little bit as I got older. Um, I remember in 72, I think, they closed the University of Iowa when I was, when I was seven years old because the students were rioting and they sent them home, like, in, I don't know, it was February or March. You know, so it was a, it was a crazy time, you know, and, and, and it was the first time in your life that the war came home at noon, at 6 o'clock news and Walter Conkright was on CBS and they're showing the Vietnam War. You just didn't see that in World War II or Korea, or, and so it was different. And um, I just, I have a lot of respect for people that give their life. Obviously, he, he saved lives, but anybody that, that puts their life in jeopardy to make my life easier, I got respect for, you know, and I didn't serve. I'm lucky. I grew up in a time when I got past that, you know. I didn't have to go to World War II and get drafted or Vietnam or any of those things, and so I feel very blessed, and so... I want my players, to, you know, to understand that too. Coach Cam Hildreth had 11 rebounds off the bench, eight points on only five shots. How important is it to have, you know, a guy like him coming off the bench playing scrappy? Oh, it's huge. Players? I mean, he's just a hard playing dude. I got on his butt because he should have had 12 because he didn't box out on that last free throw. The guy tipped in about drove me crazy. But um, Cam's a hard playing dude, hard charge. He made a big three when we needed kind of a little more cushion. He, he was, he, and then he got an offensive rebound on his own free throw. Who does that? Um, he just plays really hard. You know, sometimes he's on the edge, but it's okay. It's okay to be on the edge, and he's a hard-charging dude. And I mean, Cam's young, man. He's just a sophomore. I mean, he's got a chance to be a really good player. Davion Bradford, guys, he's just a sophomore. Andrew Carr's is a sophomore. Bobby's a freshman. Zach's a freshman. I blame Zach's parents for him missing that bunny tonight because they came to the game from Colorado. He's probably nervous. But um, the guys are young, you know, and um, Lucas is a sophomore. Damari's a sophomore. I mean, 
got some young fellas out there. They're doing pretty good. Steve, I saw you kind of slip your big line up in there for a little bit. What would you see out of those guys together? You know, I don't know. Let, I'd have to go back and look. I, I, I don't know how. We didn't play it probably as long as, you know, last year. We, we kind of went with it for a long time. So I don't really – we had so many different lineups rolling in there tonight, even with small. Like we played – drew with Andrew Carr to five and had Lucas and four guards, and we were switching everything, you know, and then we were big. and then, But that's okay. I mean, I think that versatility gives us a chance to have a good team. You know, we just don't have to play uh, one way all the time, you know. And now we do probably need to have – you know, those crustables out there as long as we can. You know, that's what peanut butter and jelly is now is crustables. And so uh, they kids nowadays, man, they can't even get out a loaf of bread and put some peanut butter. They got to eat a crustable. That would be crunchy peanut butter too, right? Yeah, cr I, yeah, you have to ask Ty that. I don't know. But um, those guys are fun to coach. And, um, man, they're pretty darn good players. I mean, Ty, Ty Appleby drew 10 fouls tonight. I mean that's being aggressive. It's being aggressive. Yeah, he had a bunch of bunch of he's a stat stuffer. Coach, you kinda led me into this point with Ty a little bit. During a sixteen six run for you guys with just uh just under eight minutes left in the second half, the the defense made a stop, hit a three, and then Ty took a charge. charge. Yeah. And that was probably the most animated I saw you at any point during the game, you know. Well, that you the, saw. That um, was, saw. That's a good point. I have the, the, I have the players around the bench now, so you can't, they can't see me during timeouts. Um, yeah, it was a great play. You know, he, he's, um, you know, he's an energy guy. And those kind of plays like that, I think, get the crowd going, get the team going. It's not always just making a three or dunking it. You know, you can do it with your defense. And uh, it was a great play, and it was the right call. And, uh, you know, he just got tired. And, and, you know, I was close. I was going to have to burn the time out just to get him back in there because things were going very well. Do you expect moving forward, Steve, that you're going to be able to schedule more opponents like this? Is it going to require home and homes to get well, these power? Well, you know, I think I overscheduled <laughs> I mean, a little bit. I mean, I mean, we're going to Rutgers, too, now, home and home. You know, we also got uh, LSU neutral. We got LaSalle, possibly Georgetown neutral. We still got to go to Wisconsin. I mean, we got App State coming here. They're, you know, they're, they got a good basketball team. Utah Valley's got a good basketball team. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I think some of it depends on who you got coming back, you know, and hopefully we can keep these guys together and have a good crew coming back, you know. And I'm really excited about uh, Aaron Clark, the kid that we signed early. I mean, he can really play. He just had a tough summer. He tore his labrum. He didn't get a play, you know, but he's a he's a player, man. He's six six like these guys we got, and he can shoot it, he can handle it, he can pass it. You know, but yeah, we'll continue to it was a great crowd, you know. Um it's a big weekend, you know, um a lot going on and you know, with big football game tomorrow. Um, you know, I I was excited. I was happy to see, you know, this many people here in November. It's probably been a while since we've had this many people in, in the arena in November like that. And so hopefully they'll keep coming back. And I think it's a relatable team, a team that you can get behind and like because they have fun playing together. And they do some, you know, it's play hard, play smart, play together. I told you that play smart doesn't always play, but the hard and together does, and they do that, you know. And so um, I, I would think they'd be fun to watch. What part is most relatable? Why uh, I think that they're, they're just 